Before you fly your drone, you need to check the airspace you're in. If it's class G or uncontrolled airspace, you're good to go. But if it's class B, C, D, or E airspace, aka controlled airspace, you need authorization to fly in it. And this is because controlled airspace is usually found near airports where a lot of manned aircraft are flying around. And although drones are pretty small, you have to stay safe with them. And in the unfortunate scenario that something happens to your drone in flight, if the FAA or police check up on you, they will probably ask if you had authorization to fly in that area, so you better have it. The good thing is that authorization is quick, free, and easy. It's also available to both recreational and commercial pilots, although commercial pilots do have some benefits, which I'll get to in a bit. And again, it is super fast to do and usually takes only 30 seconds. Before I fly, I open the app, check if I need airspace authorization. If I do, I get it, and then I launch my drone. It's that simple. In this video, I'll walk you through how to get this authorization with two different apps, Autopilot and Aloft. And hopefully by the end, you'll see how easy it is to add all of this to your pre-flight checklist. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Adam with UAV Coach, a leading drone education company where we help pilots fly safely and legally. I'm out in this beautiful park in Reno, Nevada, and I want to fly my drone. But first, I have to check if I have authorization to do so. I'm gonna check this authorization with two free mobile apps. But if you like to do this on the desktop or you wanna plan ahead, you can do this at home as well on your computer. You can even request authorization up to 90 days in advance. Let me show you how. All right, first, let's jump into Autopilot. So once you open the app, you can either type where you want to fly, or you can just pinch and scroll. And I want to fly at this park. Let's say I want to fly here. I'm just going to tap on the spot. And now it's going to bring up a circle. That's going to be our radius of where we can fly. And down here, you can see mission radius. I could drag the slider to increase the mission radius if I wanted. Let's say I just want to fly in this area right here. So it gives me the address and the lat and longitude of the location. And date and time and duration is where you can select when you want to fly and how long you want to fly. Again, you could click here and you could schedule this out for 90 days in advance if you wanted to. And duration, you could do an hour, do 15 minutes, two hours. Let's say I just want to fly for one hour. And you can see under here that you can get weather on autopilot, but it is in the paid version. But let's get down to the exciting stuff. So first on the map, I want to point your attention to these numbers, this 400 number. And that is how high you can fly in this grid area. As you can see, they split the map into different grids. So this square is 400. So that means that you are allowed to fly up to 400 feet in this area. If we scroll down here a little bit, you can see that we can fly with approval, but we have to get automatic Lance authorization to fly. It gives us rules for daylight operations. It will tell us if there's any temporary flight restrictions in the area, and it says there are not, which is good for us. And they also give you state and local warnings, and it says right here to review state and local drone laws before you launch to ensure compliance. You can also see notices to air mission warnings right here. And for operational awareness, we can see that there's a few heliports nearby. So it's just good to be aware of all of this. If everything else looks good, we can click continue. And the mission altitude, again, it says we can fly up to 400 feet. If this was in the grid below, it says only 100. So you see that some of these have differences. Even to the right, it only says 300. But in this grid that we're on, it says we can fly 400. So let's drag this slider all the way up to 400 feet and click continue. And again, it just lists all of the flight details. That all looks good. And I'm going to click submit. And it's just loading right now. And there we go. Within a few seconds, we got mission authorized. Our request was approved by the FAA, and I can fly within these plans. Click continue, and we're good to go. So we could always show this to anyone that is asking us if we have permission to fly in this area. And if you want, you could share a link to this if you need to. And one other thing I want to show before we move on to the other app, I want to show you what zero grids look like. So this is the Reno Tahoe International Airport, and as you can see, all around it is zero grids, which means you technically um, are not able to fly unless you get special permission. So let's say that if we zoom in here, 
let's find, let's say that we were doing a job for this casino. This is in a zero grid area. So if I click here, it says fly with approval and Lance auto approval is inactive because this is a zero grid area. So this is only for part 107 or commercial pilots, but if you are in a zero grid area, or let's say you're in one of those grids that says 200 feet, but you wanna fly 400 feet, then you have to get further coordination. And you can even see it down here. Auto approval is not presently available in this area, but you may be able to fly with further coordination. Now you can get further coordination through some of these apps. Autopilot is not one of them, or you can do further coordination through the FAA drone zone on your laptop. We can make a separate video on how to get further coordination if you want to see that. But basically it's just outlining a specific plan of what you're going to do and then an actual person reviews it, unlike what we just did where it was an auto approval. So that is only if you want to fly in zero grid areas or if you want to fly at an above altitude than what is posted in these grids. So example is, let's say I want to fly here. It says only 150 feet, but if I really want to get to 300, 400 feet, I would have to get further coordination. And this is only available for part 107 or commercial pilots. And it also can take up to 60 days to get a response back. So if you are planning a job or a flight there, you need to be prepared and get that ahead of time. Now, with that said, let's go on to the next app. The next app is Aloft Air Control. So we'll click this. Again, both of these apps are free. So let's go to that same spot that I want to fly at and click this and just tap where I want to fly. And now we can scroll up on this box and in Aloft, you can see we can select airspace or weather, and this is all in the free version. So it gives me some stats of what the weather is like, which can be really helpful. Now with this pinpoint, we're gonna go to the right and click Lance, and we're going to get an option of whether we're flying commercially or recreationally. I'm gonna click commercial. And if we zoom out, we can see this green box, which right now is our flight area. Now I wanna just shrink it down to this one part. So I'm just going to click and drag like that into this area. And you'll see as I do so that this um, bottom bar where we can get auto approval up to a certain altitude is going to change to 400 feet. Select this again. Awesome. So now you saw that it changed to 400 feet. If you wanted to fly in multiple areas, you see that there's two different grid zones. What you could do is just get approval for both areas just to make it easier. But again, once you go into this other grid, you'd have to fly at that certain altitude. But for this area specifically, I can fly up to 400 feet. So I'll drag this all the way up to 400, click next. Now we can select the date and time and the duration of the flight. I'm going to keep everything the same. It gives us some other notes that we can look at. And now it says we're eligible for auto approval, shows the class airspace that we're flying in and the start time and end time of our flight. We'll click next again. If you're flying commercially, you're going to have to put in your part 107 certificate number and the issue date, and then you can put in your phone number so you can get texted that you are authorized to fly. I'm going to click agree and submit. And this is the text that came through that we got approved for this authorization. So you see that how both of these apps, autopilot and aloft air control are very similar in layout and super easy to get airspace authorization. Of course, it took a little longer because I was explaining step by step, but once you actually go through the process, it can literally take 30 seconds to get approval. And that's how easy it is to get airspace authorization through Lance. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future drone videos. If you have any questions about this process, drop them in the comments below. And until next time, blue skies and safe flying.